Would you please join me in this evening's greeting? In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Our scripture reading this evening is from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This passage follows the feast of the Passover with the Last Supper, with Jesus' teachings, and with his prayer for his disciples, his words to his Father in heaven. Hear these final words of the prayer before this evening's passage began. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. It's after this time in prayer for his companions and his followers that Jesus retreats 
through the dark Kidron Valley to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, all but Judas. For you see, Judas had left the table of fellowship early. He missed Jesus talking about the new commandment, the promise of the Holy Spirit, of the true vine. He missed Jesus' prayer for even him as one of his disciples. He missed out on the last moments of God's grace poured out in teaching and in love. Judas had left his leader and his friends to collect money from those that immediately turned their backs on him once they received what they wanted. But this is the path that Judas chose, greed instead of loyalty to the Lord. Last night's drama showed a Judas that was slithering and that was sly, made me think of that snake in the grass. And so many times we see Judas portrayed this way. And yet how many times have we been the one that has also betrayed God? How many times have we chosen the path of greed? Or maybe another path that has made us grow further and further away from God. In the garden this night, we meet Jesus, who in John's gospel is calmly waiting for the events to unfold, even when it seems like there is chaos all around. So as Judas arrives in the garden with the soldiers, coming with torches and weapons, ready for an attack, they find Jesus calmly and peacefully ready for his attackers not giving them the satisfaction to outrage him, but he even comes out to meet them face to face. Then after answering calmly, he answers them for a second time, I have told you I am he. So if you are looking for me, let the others go. And from these words, Jesus begins to drink the cup that his father had given him. Our drama later will show us Peter's reaction to the soldiers in the garden. And as we journey further this week, we'll see Peter's denial and his betrayal. On Thursday, we'll be able to look closer at Jesus' last hours spent in communion with his followers, with his disciples and his friends. But for these moments, for tonight, let's just stay in the garden for a little bit. Let's stay in the calm and the peace that surrounded Jesus that night before the mob came to take our Savior away. If you're like me, when I read the story of Judas, I can think of the many times that I have betrayed my Lord. My hope for tonight for each of us is through this time of prayer and reflection, we are able to ask for God's forgiveness. For whatever path we may have chosen, that led further away from him. So I invite you to meet Christ in prayer this evening, to lay your own betrayal and your mistakes at his feet, allow his calm and his healing to reach the dark places in your life. But more than anything, pray with confidence, knowing that you will be forgiven For Christ is right there, ready to love you and to forgive you. So let us pray.
And now let us join together in our evening prayer. Holy and compassionate God, your dear son went not up to joy before he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. It was a still, cool night. Jesus led his disciples through the darkness up a narrow path on the Mount of Olives to a garden called Gethsemane. As they reached the spot, Jesus turned to them and said, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He asked Peter, James, and John to go a little further with him. They could see a sort of sadness and trouble written in the furrowed brow of the rabbi. 
And then he turned to them and said, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. They stayed where Jesus had asked them to stay. They watched him as he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw away into the garden until he was just out of sight. How long would he be? Jesus often prayed alone and for a long time with his father. So they sat down and they rested from the walk that wearied them by their own sorrow. Jesus fell with his face to the ground. With his face to the ground, he prayed most earnestly, my father, if it is possible, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. In anguish, he prayed and the sweat from his brow dropped like blood, like blood to the ground. The cup was bitter. Jesus prayed for that dreadful cup to be taken away. He prayed that if it were possible, the lamb didn't have to be slain. Rising, Jesus returned to where he asked the disciples to remain vigilant with him, and he found them dead asleep. Could you keep watch for me for one hour? He asked, then added again, watch. Pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, after entreating them once more, he went back to praying, saying, Abba, Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may, may your will be done, your will be done. And coming to his feet again, he returned to his disciples. Would they be alert for him, praying for him, standing guard for him, their friend? Sound asleep again, unable or unwilling to stay awake. Perhaps they don't understand what's at stake. Jesus pleads with his friends again to keep watch with him to the end. And once more, he goes off to pray. And once more, down they lay. But the time for keeping watch has come to an end, because in the distance, a soft glow of light is approaching quickly. The still, silent garden now begins to rumble with the sound of a fast-approaching, angry mob. The disciples are awake now. And in an instant, they're staring back at what feels like a legion of armed men waving swords and clubs in front of their hate-filled eyes. Sent by the chief priest, the teachers of the law, and the elders, the mob white-knuckled gripped their weapons, readied themselves to pounce on the one they have come to arrest. A lone man steps out from the mob and moves slowly and methodically toward the place where Jesus is now standing. The disciples didn't make a move. Why would they? This man is no threat to them or their Lord. This man is one of their own, or so they thought. The man steps in front of Jesus and leaning in close to him says, Rabbi. And kissing him on the cheek, he steps back, just catching for a moment the swelling sorrow written in the eyes of the one he just betrayed. The mob erupts. Lunging forward at this signal from Judas, they move to bind Jesus and start to drag him away. But Peter, taking up a sword, swipes at one of the mob, threatening his rabbi, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than a legion of 12 angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say that it must happen this way. And reaching out, Jesus touched the man's ear, and as quickly as he was wounded, he was healed. They dragged Jesus away, bound and chained. The cup was poured and ready for drinking. And speaking to the crowd and an unseen evil, Jesus said, this is the hour when darkness reigns. And with that, the disciples deserted him and ran away.